In this video, I am going to show you how to make a free Minecraft Java server for the version 1.21.9. So, let's get started. The first thing you want to do is go to your web browser, and I will have links in the description if you need them. But here, just go to your search bar and search up Minecraft 1.21.9, like so. Type that in, and then you'll find that we have a website called Minecraft.net, and you have a page called Minecraft Java Edition 1.21.9. Here, click on this link, and they'll bring you to the change log for this Minecraft version. So what you want to do is basically scroll down to the bottom, and then you'll find your downloadable Minecraft server jar. So you basically have to go to the bottom, not all the way, but pretty much almost to the bottom, where you can find something called get the release, here you'll find cross-platform server jar, and this is your link. So just click on this, and then you'll have the server jar. This is step one. This will run a Minecraft server on your computer. If you can't run jar files, you will have to download Java for Windows. So let me show you how to do this quickly. I will have a link in the description to actually do it, but I'm just gonna show you where to go. So just open up a new tab, go to your search bar, and search up JDK25, Java25, and then enter. Here you'll find a website called oracle.com, Java Downloads. Click on this, and they'll bring you to this website. From there, do you accept all, scroll down a bit, you'll find JDK25, make sure it is selected, go to Windows, and then you'll find x64 installer here. So this is the x64 installer with this link here, so just basically Click this link, download and install Java, and you'll be able to run the jar file if you can't do this already. So yeah, you only need to do this if you don't have Java already installed. If you do, you're all good already. So here, just go ahead and minimize or close your web browser. I'll just close mine. And from there, you have to do something I like to call a little cleanup. Basically, the jar file will put a bunch of files on your computer, or at least on the directory where it is located. So what I like to do is just a folder where you can put the jar file in. So the way this works is that you just want to right click somewhere you want, like the desktop for example. You want to do new folder. It is quite easy. Here you can call it anything. So I'll just call it server for example, but you can really call it anything. And once you have this server file here, what you want to do is just double click it. It should be empty. Then you want to go to your downloads folder. Here you should find your little jar file, just select and copy it, then go to the top left arrow to go back to the previous folder and click paste. There you go. So here you have your jar in a folder. So what you want to do is just double click the jar file. So if you just want to double click this, it will just open up like so. So yeah, it is very easy honestly, so you just double click it. This is where all the files I was talking about comes from. And here, as soon as you see ULA.txt, it stopped working. What you want to do is double click ULA.txt and do false to true. So click this, you'll find the ULA here. Just change this to true and you can continue. I already read the ULA many times, but you can just go ahead and read the ULA if you want. But yeah, once it's true, just save the file. So I'll just do file, save as and the same name. Here it will say it will replace it, yes, and you can close it. So now if you open up again, it's saved with true. Okay, so once you did this, you will have to double click the server jar again. So double click, and this will actually run the jar this time. So basically, here we have our jar. If you see a little pop up here for do you want to allow private and public network access to this app, basically, just do allow, and it will show up with this. There you go. So here the server is running. You can see it is done. It is really quick. It is one second as we don't have much going on, but we can actually join this server. So let me show you how to join this server. So number one, if you are joining this on your computer, the same computer, you will just be using the IP address 0 .0 .0 .0, right? If you are joining this server on a other computer on the same network, you have to find this device's local IP address. You can do this by simply going to your Ethernet or 
internet settings. In this case, we have Wi-Fi. From there, you'll have to go to the settings, so all settings. Then you want to go to network and internet. Then you want to go ahead and go to Wi-Fi or Ethernet. Again, this will be different than what you use. And then you want to go to your Wi-Fi's properties or Ethernet's properties. And then you want to scroll down around to the bottom here. And at some point you will find that we have an IPv4 address. So this is your computer's local IP. So any computer on this network here will be able to see it. If you want to go ahead and host the server worldwide, you will have to port forward the server. Uh, I do have a tutorial on my channel. I will have this in the description if you want to learn how to do it. It is a bit more intensive. You, know, you have to open up your Wi-Fi network and modem settings, but I will have a tutorial in the description if you want other people from other networks to join your server. So yeah, for now, let's just join the server here. So to join the server, you want to open up the Minecraft launcher. And basically, uh, let's just wait for the Minecraft launcher to fully open up. And then you'll be able to see that we have latest release here. Make sure to use the same release as the server's release version. So in this case, it is 1.29 and then just do play. So here you have to wait it for it to actually open. And then you'll be able to go ahead and actually add the server. So I'll do both uh, IPs in this case, just to show you this. So in this case, here we have Minecraft and then just go ahead and go to multiplayer and go to add server. And for the server name, it can just be like, like anything. So I'll just do a name here. doesn't matter. For the server address, like I said, was 0.0.0.0 .0 because I'm hosting it on the same device. This is basically called localhost. Just do done. Our server is here. The other IP address. So if I do a IP that you can connect on your other computers on the same network. If I just go ahead and copy this, so this one here, IPv4 address. If we do the same thing we did before, so name to and paste, you'll find that we can connect. So this one is for this computer only. This one is for all computers on the same Wi-Fi network. So any one of these will work. Just click on that and you'll be able to just go ahead and actually join the server. Okay. So this is our Minecraft server. This is it actually running. If I go to our jar, like so, we have one player ourselves. And we can give like, for example, OP in this case, uh, at A for all players, for example. And if I go back here, you'll see that we are now an operator. So I can do slash game mode creator, for example, and slash time set night, for example, very simple. And yeah, so here we are operated. This is our console here. So this little thing is our console. This is our log. So I can do like, for example, kill Benvian and that will kill us behind. So yeah, there you go. That's kind of how that works. It is quite simple to use, but yeah, here, uh, anyone on my network can join the server, but you'll have to port forward the actual server if you want other people to join your server. And I will have a link in the description to do that. So yeah, if you liked today's video, make sure to like and subscribe and see you for the next one. Bye.